And that, that was an extremely cool yeah. phone call. Amazing to hear, Chris, you were, you were in the room, you got to sit in on that phone call. You were with us in October on staff here on the board of yeah. World Compassion. And we were in uh, the Middle East a couple months ago doing an Iranian leadership con uh, conference. Got to see some of the faces of these leaders. So, but just cool to spend a few minutes with them yeah. on the phone here. Um, now, one thing that really stood out to me that I wanna hear from you on that call and I can't get over this. This is like exciting because we have felt like now's the time, like this is seed time, especially for countries that are closed to the gospel. The hearts of people are open. It's like, man, if we're wanting revival, we wanna reach a nation and we're believing for God to do that, we gotta put seed in the ground right now to expect that harvest because you can't have a harvest without seed. Yeah. And just to hear them reiterate the fact you know, I think last week I got a report and I thought it was 70 to 80 Bibles a month that we typically get a request for. And then we had like 500 requests and he reconfirmed and corrected. We typically get seven to 800 Bibles requested, meaning people searching, seeking yeah. out a Bible every month. And that is increased by 40 to 50 percent right now. That is crazy to it's me. Nuts. It's, I mean, it is time to go. It was funny because even on the call, you made him repeat it. Like, I want to make sure we're hearing this right. So that that many more people, especially in this crazy time in the world that we're all experiencing, but in the country of Iran, which seems nuts, man, there's that much more intrigue and interest in the Word of God. And, and another just cool story that came out of that, that the taxi drivers, there's, there's a few taxi drivers that are kind of on our team that help distribute the Bibles. Because we met the lady, member of the conference, don't want to interrupt, but yeah. she said, every time I get in a taxi cab, I'm witnessing to that driver. And then we were like, well, how's the fruit? And she goes, I think we're at like 30% of all taxi drivers <laughs> the in the entire fleet. Yeah. yeah. So, so they're getting after it. That, that's what's amazing. But one of those taxi drivers actually had people that work in the medical field in the taxi. And because he was equipped with Bibles, was able to meet with them, share with them. I think it was two or three hours. They get saved, plug into a house church, then they get equipped with Bibles to take to the medical clinic where they're on the front lines of, of attacking what's, what's affected our entire planet. But now they're getting to bring the message of hope that we have. They get to give that to Muslims that are searching unlike they ever have. There's this window of opportunity and we, I think we saw it kind of come through with ISIS and it's like, oh wait, this, this, there's no way this is the right path. Yeah. And so, so then we come in and help. But now, man, the world's affected and, and people are sick and, and there, there's not a vaccine and everything that could be fear-based. And now we've got people in taxis because that taxi driver was equipped with salvation and the word of God. Now they've got the same thing that they can take to the front lines where they go every day to help people physically and now spiritually. They're sitting there on the front lines multiplying that seed out to every patient that comes in. And this is what's amazing. These are people who are coming in that might be at the greatest place of fear they've ever been in their life thinking, do I have the virus? Yep. And Iran, we know, was hit really, really hard with this. And here that God has now positioned brand new Christians who have this new gospel message, who are equipped with a Bible to be able to pray with them at a time where they are at their most broken place. Their, their faith in the God that they thought they had has been shattered. Their faith in the government is shattered. Their faith in medicine is shattered. They have no foundation. And here they are presenting a solid rock, a solid foundation, a new start to life right on the medical field. And what just a cool thought, Some, somebody, maybe even somebody watching, planted seeds so that so that we could give a Bible and and somebody was able to give it to that taxi driver and he it, it's just fun to think about the generations of seed and the generations of harvest that come from that and especially when the world is searching and the world is looking for answers what an unbelievable time for God to see it man I'm gonna equip these guys in the back of that taxi so that where they go Mm -hmm. and they can take this message and duplicate the harvest. God wants to use you in your everyday life. It might be your mailman, it might be at Lowe's right now or Walmart or uh, your local grocery store or gas station. Like this is a moment in history. It's a unique time in history that God can use yeah. us in our everyday lives because everybody is thinking about it. I don't care who you are. You're thinking about health. You're thinking about healing. You're thinking about eternity. You're thinking about a higher power because humanity doesn't have an answer for this right now. I'm telling you, he's no respecter of persons. What he's doing in Iran, he wants to do in America. He wants to do in Canada. He wants to do in the United Kingdom. He wants to do in Europe and Africa. And it's time for us as individuals 
for the body of Christ yep. to rise up and Come understand on. that there's a seed of the gospel inside of us. His word is written on our hearts and it, there's an authority on us and there's a peace that we have and we've got to make that peace known to the world around us. It really is a time to sow seed. It's something that we've been talking a lot about here at World Compassion as a staff. If you've seen some of the recent publications and communications that we've sent out, it's been a focus point for us right now. The Bible says this, that as long as the earth will remain. There's seed, time, and harvest. In Ecclesiastes, it talks about seasons. There's a season for everything under heaven. And we believe right now uh, in the country of Iran, especially actually in all close countries, is a seed time. And what's amazing about the kingdom of God is it can be harvest time or it can be seed time because people are at a different place in their journey or their walk with the Lord. And so we can be sowing seed while we can be harvesting. But in Iran, in a country that has been closed off, the hearts of people who have been hardened to the gospel message in a country that is 99% Muslim have been closed off to the gospel message right now because of the fear of the coronavirus, the amazing uh, and negative, excuse me, impact that that has had and the economic sanctions that they've had uh, that country has been hit very, very hard. A lot of people don't have food. They don't have the items that they need. And so when man doesn't have an answer for something, people always look to a higher power. People are turning to religion at a really high rate right now. So those hearts that have been hardened and closed off, they're softer, they're more moldable, they're more pliable right now, and they're open. We've been praying for, we're believing for revival in Iran. I'm believing for revival in America. I mean, I just think it's the time for revival, but there's a part of it that's predicated on what seed are we putting in the ground? Man, are we, are we getting busy? Are we going after the harvest when the harvest is ready? But then when the, when the ground is ready and tilled, are we ready to put seed in the ground? And right now, we believe with all of our heart, as we just heard from our team in Iran, the number of requests, people seeking out Bibles by 40 or 50% higher than we typically get, man, that's a telltale sign that people's hearts are open. It's time to plant that seed. And so we want to keep supplying the, the local church in Iran. That is what we do. Man, God put them there. He's placed them there. He's equipped them there. They understand the language. They understand the religion. They understand the culture. There's nobody better equipped than the Iranian people themselves to reach Iran. And you can be a part of helping us do that today. There's three ways that you can participate. You can get involved right now, today, impacting Iran right from where you are. Number one is, is prayer. Let's pray for health and healing for people who have been impacted by COVID. For medical professionals, continue to pray for them to have wisdom, to collaborate together. Pray for their safety, their strength, God's people to have innovative ideas right now. Government leaders who are continuing to navigate and lead and trying to control uh, and to help serve their countries and their communities. And then let's also pray that the seed that we are sowing is falling on good ground. Let's pray for that harvest that we're talking about. Let's pray for the multiplication that we know that's gonna come from this. And then the second is people can share. They can talk about this. Yep. So, so think of a couple things. One, you can invest your time into this. Man, write a post, let your sphere know about what World Compassion is doing to reach the country of Iran. The other thing is you just kind of take the mindset of becoming an advocate. You have a voice. The whole world has a voice right now and we're, we're a lot of us are seeing all of those voices. Let's flood Instagram and, and Facebook and Twitter with a positive voice about what we actually can do. So please help us share this story, explain to people actually what is happening. There are good things happening in the midst of this crisis. And, and what happens there is it takes the focus off of us. Man, we're sharing about the good things and now there's, there's less pressure. Now there's, there's less focus on the negative because we're sharing the positive. And it makes all of us, as we share, distributors of the good word and the good works that are actually taking place right it now. It gives us a little bit of a purpose. I yep. think we're all looking for, how can I be a part of a positive purpose right now? And so I wanna challenge you, take a minute and think about how you would articulate. Why is this important to you? Why do you think other people should get involved? Why should we seize this opportunity? Man, God's got something in you to share, to inspire other people to be a part of something like this. And it's really not about being a voice for World Compassion. It's about being a voice for the church in Iran, in the church in close countries around the world. And so you get to be their voice. You get to help be their champion as we're connected to the body of Christ. A great opportunity for you to do that. So put it in your own words and then just share this link. Let them hear these stories and let's multiply the impact that we can make. <clears throat> the third opportunity is obviously giving. One of the things that we're adding to these Bibles because of the situation, and we know there's need all over the world right now. There's needs right there in your own community, right here in our community. People need food, they need help. 
But again, in Iran, because of the open door, we're going to increase what we're doing there by adding food packages and other needed items uh, to these Bibles. And so these teams who are out distributing Bibles and reaching people and fulfilling these requests that are coming in, we're going to put food in their hands. And we believe that it's going to open the door uh, to more people um, and again, just meet them at their place of need. And it's that gift that opens the door to have a conversation, to build a relationship, and through that relationship, an opportunity to present the gospel message, just like the Bibles had. So if, if you can give just Bibles, that's great. It's about $6 a Bible that it costs us to put that in the hands of somebody, uh, helping to support the teams that are doing it there as well. Uh, but then food packs for a family of four for about a week uh, with a Bible, it's about $100. And so that in, in empowers the church there, teams that are going out to provide not only a Bible, but also a food pack during this time. And so I wanna challenge you to pray about what you can give. Let's give generously. We understand, completely understand, that right now there's incredible economic impact around the world. So do not in any way feel pressure to give if you cannot do that right now. We simply just wanna provide the opportunity for those who are in a place where they can give, maybe give a little extra right now, a special gift. This is that chance, this is that opportunity. Again, because we have a unique time in history as the body of Christ to sow seed in one of the most closed countries of the world to reach these people. We don't want this opportunity to go by. So we're just simply opening this opportunity up to you, up to you to be a voice, share with your friends and inviting them. If this is your first time uh, being a part of something with World Compassion, man, go through our website, check us out, learn about us, figure out who you're investing with. We're confident, we're great stewards with the resources that you provide. And we are very passionate and excited about what we do. So thank you for giving us an opportunity to present this to you. Um, and again, we're extending that invitation uh, for you to give. The different ways to give are gonna be on your screen. You can give through our website at worldcompassion.tv you can mail in a gift if you would still prefer to do that. Phone numbers for you to call are right there. But I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening to this, for watching this, and being a part of what God is doing in the earth right now. It's an incredible time to be alive, to be the body of Christ. He wants to use each and every one of us to reach somebody. And this is a way that you can help reach Iran right from where you are. But don't forget that God wants to use you to reach your community right where you're at. Also, make sure you let us know how we can pray for you. Send us an email at prayer at worldcompassion.tv or call one of those numbers that are on the screen. We wanna pray for you if there's something specific that you're going through right now. Hopefully you're connected, you're planted with a local church somewhere in your community, but we're also here for you. We're standing with you, we're praying with you. So please let us, let our team know. If you call and we miss you, we will call you back, but we're believing God for you. This is an incredible time. Don't go through it alone. We love you all so much and we hope to see you soon.